Um, hopefully y'all had a really good lunch. Today, we've got 45 minutes of an intro to what Figma is and how you can leverage it for your projects. So let's just jump into it. These are some of our agenda items today. I'll be covering what is Figma. Michelle's gonna lead us through a fun activity to recreate Uber Eats. I'm sure some of you have used the app before during this pandemic. And then I'll touch in how to leverage Figma um, and some of its features to showcase all of your amazing work that you'll be doing tomorrow. Um, so for starters, Michelle and I are your hosts. So I'll pass it on over to Michelle to share a little bit about herself. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. It's nice to virtually meet you all. My name's Michelle. I'm a UX designer at Amazon. I heard you guys just had an introduction um, course or workshop to UX and UI design. Um, I actually graduated from Lick Wilmerding, and I think Elsa and some of the other girls on this call who are hosting this also went to Lick Wilmerding. So super cool to kind of be part of it as an alumni. Um, I then went to the University of Michigan where I actually was able to major in user experience design as a major, which was really cool. Um, and then I, after I graduated, I went and moved to Seattle to go work at Amazon and um, be a UX designer for them. So some of the projects that I worked on on Amazon, um, I actually work within the device design group organization. So we have a ton of really cool um, devices at Amazon. They range from like fire tablets to Echo shows, um, TVs and, and whatnot. So I'm responsible for designing these user interfaces and experiences on these devices. Um, and I even had a really cool project where I worked with a Alexa enabled microwave. Awesome, those are so fun. Um, just to share a little bit about myself, I graduated high school in 2012, and then I went on over to San Diego to study neuroscience initially, actually. Um, and then I figured out that there was a career in design, and I was like, what is that? And so I switched halfway through and majored in cognitive science, which was sort of the, the feeder like UX major before they officially instated a design program. Um, for fun, I like to ride my motorcycle. I got into it when I was 16. So maybe some of you all are 16 now. Um, I don't know if I should recommend it in this session, but I'll just say that I had a lot of fun writing and I'm also a big Boba fanatic. So just a couple of fun facts about me. Um, so to kick us off, what is Figma? Figma is a design platform that helps teams collaborate together on the same file. And instead of just describing it to you all, I'd love for, all of us to get into a file together. So I'm gonna go ahead and link this in our chat. I'm gonna stop sharing right now and put this link in the chat super quick. And so if you go ahead and click that link, it's totally okay if you don't have an account yet, um, let me know what the experience is coming into the file. And you'll see, oh, awesome. I see all of your cursors coming in. Everyone's filing in, which is so much fun. And I've just got a really basic prompt. Um, where is the first place you wanna travel after this pandemic is over? And just sort of hover over where you want to head on over. And I'm gonna take a little like global selfie with us all and share that picture out later. So I'm gonna hover over Taiwan. That's where my family is from. So I'm gonna put my cursor over there. Go ahead and place your cursor where you want to travel. I just like to share this part first because it sort of illustrates the collaborative platform that is Figma. And so when you are working on your projects together, obviously all of us are remote, we're all over the world right now, um, but you can still all be in the file together. So you see that when you're teammates, you can sort of see where their cursor is at. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot. So get your cursors ready. Take the screenshot. One, two, three. I'll take one more. One, two, three. Man, not too many people in North America. Everyone wants to get out. I guess, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Thanks so much for uh, hopping into that, this uh, file. You can exit if you want to. Just to continue on with our slide deck, brush through these slides. 
Okay, so back into what Figma is all about. Our vision is to make design accessible to everyone. So you might be familiar with software such as Photoshop or Illustrator. Um, a lot of those have a really big price tag behind it. And so we like to offer free accounts just so anyone, including students, can just jump in if they have an idea like this hackathon that y'all are a part of to just jump in and create something uh, really valuable to users. And so these are just a few of the companies that rely on our software to do their work with their teams. So while our vision is to make design accessible to all, our mission is to help teams collaborate visually all the way from brainstorming in the file together. We just launched a new product called FigJam, which is very similar to like a remote virtual whiteboarding experience all the way to that build phase at the end. And so that's a quick snapshot of what Figma is. And to kick it off, we're going to start our activity, which we will be in for the next 20 or so minutes. And for starters, I'm going to drop another link in the chat where all of you can get a copy of this deck and also a copy of our workshop materials. So let me grab that and send it to you all. Um, and I am going to share my screen. All right, can you guys see my web browser? Yes. Awesome. All right, so as Clara said, you guys are actually, the link that she just dropped allows you guys to kind of view this, um, this Figma file. And we have some different pages. So this first page is actually pretty cool because Figma allows you guys to create presentations in Figma so you can collaborate um, and also kind of start your designs for your, um, your designs as well. And so what our activity is that Clara kind of um, introduced in the very beginning is that we want you to recreate um, an Uber Eats screen on that you would see on your phone. So this is a screenshot that I took on my phone of the Uber Eats. And then this is actually a Figma, um, a Figma design that I created. It's created all in Figma. Um, and I am going to kind of give you guys like a breakdown for what Figma is like, what are the tools that you guys should be, you should know how to, how to use and how to, and how to kind of create this file yourselves. Um, so I think like what's really important first off is that um, what's really cool about Figma is that they have these things called frames. They're kind of like canvases or artboards, but it's basically where you're going to want to um, kind of start your designs on. So if you were to click frame from this drop down menu up here, um, on this uh, right hand panel, it's pretty dynamic. So depending on what you're focused on, it will update um, appropriately, but there are a ton of different frames um, available to us. So if we want to create a frame for um, like an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 11, Figma already has those dimensions available to us. If you're looking at tablets or you wanna design for a desktop, a presentation or anything else, Figma also has those, those uh, dimensions ready for us. Oh no. And so I'm going to, click a iPhone X frame. Um, and then it kind of for like the process for how I would start um, to recreate this Uber Eats uh, screenshot over here is that, well, one of the things there is that there's a lot of text there. So by hovering over this T button at the very top, you can select that to kind of create your own text box. So this is pretty large right now, but but if I want to recreate restaurants, I can do that here. Um, if you guys are, are familiar with any other like text editors like Microsoft Word or um, even like Google Docs, there are a ton of different capabilities here to edit your text. Um, like if you want to center align it, you can select this here. If you want to adjust the size of it, um, you can type in different values. So the larger the, the number, the, the bigger it will be. So if I press 100, it'll get, it will get larger. Um, but let's go back to 20 for restaurants. Um, and then Claire and I also have kind of like taken different Uber Eats components that might be harder to find. Um, so things like the icons that they use on this page, we kind of pulled them out already for you guys to use and it's, and it's accessible to you guys. We also kind of sourced some images that you guys want to use as well. And then to continue to, to build this Uber Eats screen, like you, what I would do next is to kind of look at what are the major components that are that are making up this screen? So I see that we have like a really big banner for advertising for Uber Eats. And then below that we have different uh, restaurant options to, to pick our food from. So if we want to recreate this banner, um, I see that it's actually just kind of a rectangle with a background. So I can select this square icon at the very top 
and it will bring me a drop down menu of different shapes that I can create in Figma. So if I were to select a rectangle tool, I can go over to my Figma board, I can drag my and hold down my mouse to create a banner that is around the same uh, dimensions. And then I can also start to, again, press that text button at the very top to bring in text, like double the delish, put it here and start recreating um, the images from there. We also have some photos here if you guys wanna use it. We used it um, uh, in, the, in, in our example over here. Um, and then looking at this rectangle also, if we wanted to start making like these pill buttons um, at the very top that are kind of acting as filters, we can do that again by, by using a rectangle. And to kind of get that pill button shape, this little button over here um, will kind of manipulate the corners, how round the corners are. So if you hover over the, um, the little corner radius icon and you uh, select on your mouse, you can see that the corners are starting to round a little bit more when you drag it to the right. And if you continue to drag it, it will become fully round like a pill button and it no longer looks like a rectangle because it, has, it doesn't have those sharp edges anymore. Um, and then to change the color of your, um, of your, of the, of the rectangles and the, the circles and the shapes that you're creating, you can select the shape. And then here where it says fill, you can change the color. So you can select it and then you have this whole entire gradient. This is just for the color red. So if you were to drag the circle over to whatever color in this gradient that you want, the color will affect that. If you don't want red, maybe you want to change it to blue. You can drag this over to the blue section and update the color there. To kind of make it easier for you guys also, Claire and I do have, um, we did pull out some of the, the standard colors for Uber Eats. Um, so if you want to get this, this color green, you can type in this code right here that says 05A253. And then the color will change and it will match the Uber Eats if you want to get super precise and super exact to, to looking like the Uber Eats, the Uber Eats page. Um, and then for the images, we have some images for you to use. Um, and you can kind of copy and paste the images from here if you do um, Apple C or if you were to use your mouse and um, select on the right side, um, you can copy from, from here. And then you can also kind of adjust the, the width and the, the size of the image by um, kind of dragging the, the corners of the rectangle to adjust it as you want. Um, so let's say that this is going to be our one for sushi. Since it, there's a little bit of, it doesn't take up the whole entire page of the frame, we can adjust it so it's just a little bit. And then, right, 10 sushi. Um, and then you can kind of just copy the, the text, just like the color, uh, changing the color on the rectangles, you can change the color of the text as well um, below in the fill section. So if we want to change the color to red, we can move our little circle over to the to a, a, a bright shade of red. If we wanted a little darker, we can move it down as well, but we can bring it back to being black. Um, and then if we want a different shape, like a circle, you can also create a circle in Figma as well. Um, and if you want to make the purport, pro tip, if you want to make the proportions uh, equal, sometimes it can get like a little funky like this. Um, if you hold down shift when you're dragging one of the corners, it will keep the proportion so that it's it's kind of a, it's an even circle and it doesn't get a little oblong or misshaped. Um, so going through that process, that's kind of the basics for how we want you guys to, to start creating the, your Uber Eats example in this Figma file. Um, if you finish early, uh, we have another challenge for you and we welcome you guys to try and recreate um, this Venmo screenshot as well. Um, Claire and I will be on the call um, and we can answer any questions that you guys might have um, to, to make sure that we're, you guys are in a good spot to start designing your own projects.
And Michelle, just to clarify, are participants working on this file or duplicating the file and working on it individually? Yeah, um, so that link, let me, I'm gonna add it again. There's an option to duplicate it. So let me walk through that process if that might help. Awesome, thank you, Clara. So in that link, you should see something like this and you'll have the option to duplicate it up here. Um, and once you click that, you can select the account that you're duplicating it to. In this case, I just wanna do it to my personal account. If you just have one account, then you'll be duplicating it there. It's gonna essentially make an exact copy of that on your local account for Figma. And so when you jump into these slides, you can navigate over to that workshop area where we started. Um, the one that Michelle was showing was her version of the uh, slide deck, but this is your own version. So like no one else will see it unless you invite them in. So this is where you can go ahead and start recreating the screen, dragging some of these elements out um, and creating stuff. So. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat and we can share a screen just to walk through these as well. If anyone has a song request, I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and try and find it and play it while we're working together. Ooh, Anu says, Girl on Fire by Alyssa Keys. Nice, Anu. And when the end, actually, Claire, I really liked your, um, office hours. It was like lo-fi, like very, I liked it. <laughs> That's what I listen to when I study. Nice. Maybe I'll put that on after. Yeah. <laughs> I see that, um, <clears throat> let's see, someone has an issue. Is it Chisateri has an issue with Wi-Fi? Are any of your teammates here? Okay, great. So I was wondering, um, Clara, Michelle, maybe would it be possible for, because their Wi-Fi is slow right now, for them to watch someone else, one of their teammates? Is that possible? Like they log on to the same account or something? Oh, yeah. Let me walk right? through a similar process. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So that earlier activity when we were in the map together, that was showcasing sort of the collaborative capabilities of this. When you duplicate something into your personal account, now that's just for you. Um, in here, I can see, because this was the file that me and Michelle worked on together, I see that she's here with her avatar. And what I did was I clicked the share button and then invited her to the file. I can also just click her avatar. And now you can see that I'm observing what Michelle is doing. And so if, if your account is working, if you're a teammate, I can see like exactly where her cursor is. To exit that observation mode, I'm gonna click my profile. Um, but now you're in your local copy. If you wanna invite your teammate, you can just go ahead and uh, type in their email, select can view, and then send that invite. And so when they open up their invite, they should get it in their email. They can go ahead and do that same thing and sort of click along to see what they're doing. So that's an option there. Let me know if uh, you run into any questions. Great, thank you so much. And then we have another message from Cynthia Zhang said, um, am I supposed to be able to work on one slide? I can see all of them, but I can't really zoom onto a specific one. This is from oh. Cynthia Zhang. Okay. Um, so the way to zoom into an area you can either press command plus to go in and then, or command minus to zoom out. You can also hold down the Z key that'll open up this magnifying icon. And then you can drag to the area that you want to look closer on. So if I wanna take a closer look on these images, I'm gonna hold Z and then just select that area to help me go in. At that point, now I can make edits on a little bit closer level uh, you know, make different shapes and stuff. So hopefully that helps with zooming in and out. Thank you. And just a quick announcement to um, our participants. Um, just a reminder, if you have a, a question um, for either uh, any of our presenters, just don't forget to, um, you, that, forget to make sure that you're sending the message to everyone. Thank you. 
So for the filter icon, um, this one right here, if it's the search one or the filter, we've got our little component library on this in this area right here. And so you can just go ahead and either copy and paste. So if I do command C or control C and then control V, it's going to make a copy of it. Or um, if you want to hold down alt or option, you'll see that now my cursor sort of has this duplicate look. And if you click and drag, it'll just make a copy of that. So right now I'm just holding option and that'll let me make copies of different things that I'm clicking. And you can drag it to from, from this component frame to the, the whatever frame that you're working on. Nidia has a question about uh, adding people to the same project. So if I want to go back to my home area, you can create different projects. Um, and the invite is essentially the same sort of model where you can invite different people um, on a project basis or on a file by file basis. Actually, a quick note on the music, like Ms. Torres did see in the chat, we are going to be putting the recording on YouTube. Therefore, we do have to use non copyrighted music. So I did find some piano that's non copyrighted um, in terms of music. So if you want me to play that, I can and I can turn it off whenever there's a question. So, yeah. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Thanks so much, Elsa. <laughs> Elsa, I can share my screen real quick to answer Claire's question. So you might be just seeing something like this. So if you're on the intro, um, maybe there's no pages over here. So you would click this drop down area. And that'll open up the rest of the pages. So we want to be in this workshop activity page. Hopefully you'll see that little drop down. It just toggles it like open and closed. Hopefully that helps. I saw a question on uh, rounding edges of a rectangle. So I'm going to create a rectangle. Um, and then over here, there's a little icon with this corner radius. And if I want to update that to 16. Wait, hang on, I think Elsa needs to stop sharing. Okay. Oh. There we go. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, you'll be able to, after you create your rectangle, you'll be able to update stop. this field. Hopefully that, hopefully my screen is sharing okay. Internet is not surviving again. I'm going to put the link to the music in the chat um, for one of the JT team leaders to take over. <laughs> so either that could be Ms. Torres or Ami. Hey, everyone. So we're almost about to wrap up, but I would actually love to see some of the work that you all did. And I would love to open it up just for like three to five participants to share their progress. Michelle and I would love to see it. Um, so if you want to just uh, speak out in the Zoom and I'll hand over the Zoom sharing. Also, don't worry, I know it can feel a bit intimidating, but this could be a really fun way to share what you made. So I don't know, could be fun. So if you wanna take that chance and you know, be courageous today, we're totally written for you. There's no mistakes. Whatever you made is totally awesome. Yes, this is a safe space. And of course, uh, we're here after during your break if you want to just uh, have a few more tips um, and we can help you spruce up your design too. Oh, perfect. Tiffany. Wait, do I share my screen or something? Yeah, if you can. So I didn't finish, but this is what I have. Ooh, very nice. Oh, nice. Ooh, the top looks good. pretty much perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So cool. That's awesome. Anything like, just like a last, anything you found like fun or challenging about it or something to add? Um, for Figma, I feel like it was super cool how they just like automatically adjusted your font. Like, 
I didn't even like try to make the 20% off part smaller, but it just did it for me. So I thought it was really convenient. Nice. Why don't we have um, Cheesy Terry go? Perfect, Dono. <laughs> you spoke my words. <laughs> I didn't get to. I didn't get to finish, but I was in the middle of making it. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. I didn't get to really finish it. So. That's okay. Oh, nice. You made all the those filters buttons. look super good. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to stop sharing that? Yeah, do you have anything you want to add? Like something you thought was cool or challenging or um, any well, questions? It just kind of reminded me of Canva. Like, I go with all the elements with them. Totally, yeah. Ah, nice. Yeah. That's like super great progress in the short amount of time that Claire and I gave you guys and with our crash course also. Does mm -hmm. one more person want to share before we wrap it up? Yay, we got a last participant. Yes, go for it. Go. Yes. Um, I actually work on the page below it. The, I work on this one. Oh, cool. Nice. That's super, super good. Thank you. Nice, you got the whole outline. You're pretty much ready to mm -hmm. finish it up. Yeah, once you get the text in, it's going to look great. Mm -hmm. And Cho, what about you? Anything like challenging? Same thing as I said with other people. Like anything challenging or you thought was cool or questions? Um, I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's really fun. I don't, um, it's, I have some experience like with similar things before, so it wasn't too challenging, but I think it's really fun. Awesome. It's great to hear. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. I've just got a couple of slides to finish us off. And so again, thank you all so much for joining our crash course on Figma. Of course, there's so much more to it and there's a bunch of resources I wanna leave you with. The first of which is figma.com slash community. Um, this link is also in the slides if you duplicated that file. And so let me just go through what you would expect if you go into figma.com slash community. Um, so Figma is all based in the browser. You can also download it as a desktop app. But when I go to figma.com slash community, I can essentially look for anything that might help my project. So let's say you're looking for a UI kit. Um, I can just type in UI kit and maybe I want the material Google design UI kit. They've published theirs. And so I can hop in here. Let's see, let me find their actual one. Um, Uber also downloaded theirs. And so you can just go in here and duplicate that file. And so if I duplicate that, you'll pretty much get all of these elements sort of pre-bucketed, ready for you to go to create your idea, build out your design. And so just like we did in the activity where we duplicated those items, um, when I go in here, I could just make a copy of this thing, change some of the text, drop it in uh, my design. And maybe you are preparing for your presentation pitch deck. I can type in presentation or slide deck, click into one of these, duplicate it. Um, and at that point, I just need to update it to my text. So maybe your branding is not so yellow. You wanna update that to purple. You can quickly do that, put in your name, so I'm gonna type in Clara, and then you're almost ready to go to share your, share your ideas. And so hopefully, this community platform will equip you to create all the stuff you need. You can see some people have made like posters from Luca. You can also publish that onto your own profile. So you have this whole world that you can just jump into. And so um, I'm excited to see all of your projects. We're so happy to have joined this hackathon and thanks so much. Also, thank you to Clara and Michelle. Amazing, amazing. And for everyone for joining. So yeah.